I'm Rachel. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some house plants I got for the month of December. I figure December is almost over and I'm not going to be going back to my local garden center anytime soon because they're going to be closed for the next like month and a half ish. So I wanted to share with you what I got and I also got some seeds since they are going to be closed this next month and some of these seeds I would like to start in February if I can. Um, I wanted to go ahead and get as many seeds as I could because I got a lot of flower seeds and I don't know. I don't really entirely know what all I'm going to be doing, but I want to be able to start some early crops of herbs and I definitely want to start those at least in February. So I wanted to go ahead and get most of my seeds already. So I'm going to share with you what I got myself for Christmas basically because my local garden center had my local nursery that sells houseplants. Okay, they had Monstera adansonii and I freaked out because these little containers, these are $4. And I mean, it's a little tiny cutting, which you know, usually it's like, oh, that's kind of, I mean, that's not bad, honestly, for a monster added Sony. I usually, these go from like anywhere between 10 to like $40 for this size, which I think is bizarre. I mean, it's a plant and it propagates so easily. But anyways, they had them for $4 and I figure, you know, they don't have a ton. I mean, they have a decent amount, but I'll get two of them and one of them I can grow better more and I can take cuttings for both of them and share them with my cousins. But I went back there two weeks later to get some seeds and oh boy, they had more. And I figure, you know what? Not everybody is buying all of these, so I'm gonna get a couple more. So I ended up with four Monstera Adansonii's, and I also, I did get some pots, but they're just some orchid pots, and I'll show you them when I repot all of these, which I'll do in another video. But I had a coupon too, to use on other things, so I bought an orchid pot, but it's not an orchid pot. Anyways, and I also got some soil with that, but then I had to of course get some plants and some seeds. So all of these have gotten new growth. I've had them for um, a couple of weeks now, and this one has a new leaf, and let's see. Um, this one is getting a new leaf here, and um, this one, oh yeah, this one popped out this leaf, and yeah, this is the only one that only has a little baby leaf that's kind of working its way out. This one, this leaf, is huge. It's like almost the size of my hand, almost as long anyways, basically, and I mean, it's beautiful. Oh, I just love these because they just look like something out of Jurassic Park, and I don't know. I just like that a lot. Makes me want to get some sort of an iguana or something. Anyways. <laughs> Not that I need something else to take care of. And then I also got a philodendron, just a little heartly philodendron. I have two others of these and they just grow so well and I'm kind of in love with them. And this one, I just like the color of it. I don't know, something about it, I just needed it. And then they also had some little, um, what do you call them, rubra? Is that what they're called? Anyways, it's a rubber tree and I already have one. Um, it's right here. Uh, this one, it had a hard time adjusting to my house. I wasn't taking care of it really quite properly. It just wasn't in the best pot at first when I repotted it and then I put it into a terracotta and it doesn't really quite seem to like the terracotta as much. I don't know. It's doing better now, but I have to water it more often than I'd like. So I thought I'd start off with a baby one because I'm having problems with one, so why not get another? <laughs> so I just liked it though, of course, because they're so beautiful and I love the colors. The other one has a lot more white on it, whereas this one is more green and pink and I don't know. I just liked all the sagey green that's in it and I, I just wanted it, so honestly. That's why I got it. And then I also got this arrowhead plant. I got this for my mom actually for Christmas because she already knows i getting it for her. I She was there and I asked her if she liked it and if she would mind if I got it for her. Cause she's, I mean, she has a lot of plants and she doesn't necessarily want more, but 
I have a plan for this and I figure if she can put it in multiple places in her house so I just I like this color and I have one like this and it's really easy to take care of so I thought that I'd get this for her and oh and then I also got this one here this is just a little plant that my mom gave me because it's sad and pitiful and she was sick of it so I have it and I'm going to put it with my um, sad little plants that basically have no hope in life but I keep them all in a little pot together and they keep each other company until the day that they die but um, yeah it's weird because somehow I feel like they're gonna die but then they end up lasting forever so I <laughs> have a whole pot full of all these little sad plants that just keep chugging along so anyways when I go and pot these up I'm going to mix a mixture of perlite and potting mix that it's basically what these are already in um, let me see so all of these have really nice good root structures but you know this way I can show you what the potting mix looks like I'm basically going to mix my potting mix to look like this when I do mix it up let's see if it'll focus so you can see that there's some perlite in there and mostly potting mix though and I'm just going to do something like that put a little bit of sand in there and then they should be happy make it to where it drains well but also still holds on to moisture and also has a lot of you know air it doesn't get suffocated not big pockets of air of course you don't want big pockets of air in your soil but having that like pumice or perlite in there helps make it to where everything stays oxygenated if that makes sense it doesn't become too dense and heavy so that way the roots can grow and be happier and you can get more leaf growth as well because you're going to have healthy roots getting all the nutrients up of course so anyways and then for this arrowhead plant i am going to do basically the same thing but i'm going to add a little bit more perlite these don't seem to like to have soil that's quite as dense i do really well with actually the basic potting mix for outdoor plants with the arrowhead plants so i'm going to mix up something similar to that put in a little bit of bark and a little bit more perlite than for these and then of course this one I'm just gonna I'm gonna take whatever I have left over and mix it all together for this little baby because you know what they do good in everything I mean as long as I don't put it in cactus mix it's gonna be fine and then for my rubber tree what I find for things like my rubber trees and like sansevarias and stuff my succulent plants that aren't really actually succulents but are succulents I don't know it makes absolutely no sense what I'm trying to say but some things like my sinensios and my sansevarias they like regular potting mix but they also like to drain freely to an extent so I'm going to be mixing this up in a little bit more of a looser soil something with more perlite and I might actually just add a little bit of my um, cactus mix in with this soil that I mix up for this one so that way you know it has enough place like air and room to feel free and alive but it'll also retain enough moisture because I will be planting this in terracotta but I, it's kind of a sealed terracotta that I'm going to try with this one to see if it does better than the other one because the other one the terracotta I didn't seal it at all whereas this terracotta I sealed a whole bunch of it with some Thompson's water seal so that way I could do this project that I haven't gotten around to. So I'm going to go ahead and try that with this um, rubber tree just to see how well it does because I'm hoping that it does better and it can transition easier into my house. I bet you though that concrete might be better than terracotta for something like this. So one day I'd like to try that but not today because I don't have any concrete pots and I don't really want to make any right now because I have too many other projects to do. So when I repot these monsteras, I'm going to go ahead and repot these for my cousins 
um, in another day or so when I get time. And I'm going to pot these probably in terracotta. I'm If I have any plastic pots, I'm going to actually do that because I feel like that will be easier for my cousins to take care of. So that way they don't have to worry about watering them quite as often. Whereas these two, I'm going to pot them up together for myself and I'm going to put them in a terracotta pot. In one of my orchid pots that I got, it's not an actual orchid pot because there's no holes in the side, but it's labeled as that. So it's a long terracotta pot that gets tapered at the bottom and they're just beautiful and I love how the structure of the Monsteras look with that and I think that the Andesodii will look beautiful with that as well. So um, yeah, let's go into my seeds. Let me clean off some of this dirt. So I first purchased some seeds at my local garden supply. So the same place I got these, and I'm in the western slope of Colorado. As far as I know, uh, the only place in the whole western side of the state, basically, especially in the valley, there's only one place that's local that sells houseplants during the winter, during the off season, and that is Book Cliff Gardens, and that's where I got all of these and these seeds. And then I ordered these online. I didn't realize that Botanical Interest was a Colorado-based company until I ordered these seeds and I saw that my package was like almost here in just a couple of days. I was like, wait a second, what? And I was like, oh no wonder my seeds do so well because they already kind of understand this climate. It's pretty crazy. So for the seeds that I got, I got these I got some zinnias. Um, I just love this color. And I'm really hoping that I can actually get some zinnias to grow this year. So I also got some watermelon seeds and some early charm asters. I bought, I think, a lot of asters from my seed order as well. They're just so beautiful and I want to grow them. <laughs> so asters aren't too difficult for me to grow. So I hope that I do good with them this year. I usually buy perennial salvia, but I thought it'd be fun to try an annual version. I'm pretty sure that this is an annual, so unless it didn't say anything. It says that the bloom time is from spring to fall, so I'm guessing that this is the annual. It didn't really say anything. I, I have grown the perennial version. I have them in my perennial garden, and they grow great for me, but they don't bloom all year, of course. And I got some chamomile, so that way we can grow some for some tea and things. Ooh, I just love these zinnias. I love the colors. And I also, I think I got some of these in my botanical interest order as well. And then I got some sea seashell cosmos. I grew these this last year and they did so great. And they're so fun. They kept blooming like crazy, of course. And some snapdragons. I got some tall varieties here and also in my bot botanical interest order. As I love snapdragons, but I always get the ones in the containers that are already planted and they just don't grow tall. And I want tall snapdragons for my garden and to cut. Um, I wanted to try to grow some dahlias from seed because I want to eventually grow dahlias from tubers, but I'd like to try from seed first just to see how well it works and to see if they'll grow tubers. I read a lot of really good reviews on dahlia seeds that they actually work really great, so hopefully they will. I got some poppies. These are the Shirley English, or Shirley Poppy English. <laughs> Anyways, I just love the colors. I do really well with poppies in general, so usually I try to grow them in one specific area, but they don't really want to grow there. They end up coming up somewhere else, so We'll see if I can get some of these to actually grow in containers that I will transplant. Usually poppies aren't the best for transplanting, but I want to try a few anyways, and I'll reserve, of course, plenty to direct sow. And I got some bachelor buttons, because who doesn't love bachelor buttons? And, oh, some dianthus. Dianthus is so easy to grow, but I've never grown it from seed, so I wanted to try it this year. And it's one that is kind of a tender perennial for me. Sometimes I can get it to actually winter over. And then I have some amaranth. This is Love Lies Bleeding. I like this one because it kind of, it, I don't know, it has that kind of curly look to it almost. I just thought it was beautiful and who doesn't love amaranth? And I love amaranth for its greens. It tastes delicious as a substitute for spinach. I actually love to use it in Spanakopita, it's so good. 
So this is my botanical interest order, which they were amazing. I've never ordered seeds online. I usually just buy them locally, but since I wanted to get a head start this year, I decided that I'd do a whole order. Their customer service was amazing. They helped me out so much. For some reason, I was acting like this old lady that couldn't do anything on the computer. I mean, I worse than an old lady. I mean, I was just being incompetent. And for some reason, I couldn't figure out how to do the credit card thing correctly. I just wasn't seeing things on there. And they really helped me out big time and helped me get everything the way that I needed it to be and set up to where I got my order <laughs> and very quickly as well. So they sent me a cute little thank you packet of seeds and this is a great blend of seeds and I love using this blend and I didn't buy any this year because I thought I might have some still. I'm not really sure if it's still checked but this way I have plenty. They also sent a seed starting guide and they have a lot of resources online to help you out as well and I find that a lot of their information just on the seeds in general online and in the packets are just very helpful for me to grow and I've just had good luck with all of their seeds I've tried to grow. So I got this amaranth. It's an edible red leaf. And like I said, I love to eat amaranth. And I love the leaf color on this. And I thought it might look really nice in cut arrangements as well. So yeah, I just wanted to get this for the greens and for how beautiful it is. I got some Kentucky Wonder pole beans. I wanted to get pole beans because I like pole beans better than bush beans. I just do. I mean, the way that they grow and everything and the, how long you get them and everything, I just like them better. So I got some early wonder beets. I love planting these and they grow great and so I got some. <laughs> I do have a hard time with like grubs getting into my beets though, so I'm going to try to plant them in other places this year and so hopefully we do better with them because I just always end up getting all these bugs eating them. So I got some uh, Tonda di Parigi carrots. These are my favorite carrots to grow because they just do really great in our clay soil and I don't have to worry about them getting misshapen and not growing appropriately because it's just hard to get through our soil sometimes for the tap roots. Plus they're really fun for kids to go out there and pick a carrot and they got this perfect little round carrot. They just love it. So I got some collard greens. I haven't grown collard greens for a few years, but I keep growing Swiss chard and I hate Swiss chard, but I can stand collard greens and my husband loves both. So I thought that I would grow collard greens this year instead of Swiss chard because I'm just, I'm sick of Swiss chard. Just because I can grow it super easily doesn't mean that I want to keep eating it. Um, so I got some sweet corn. This is the sugar baby sweet corn. I have heard some good things about this and I just wanted to try it. So I've never really grown corn before very successfully. I haven't really ever tried very well. I just put some corn in the ground and see if anything happens in the perennial garden. And so this year I want to purposefully or grow it with purpose. Yes, this year I'd like to grow corn with purpose and see if I can get anything from it because organic corn is so expensive, you guys. And I just, I don't want to pay that much money. Heck, let it, like, this last week when I went to the grocery store, lettuce had gone up a whole dollar. It was crazy. Like, no, I'm going to have to start some lettuce inside because I'm not going to pay like $3 for a head of lettuce. It's just craziness. Um, but I got some black seeded Simpson lettuce. This is what I normally grow. Um, not necessarily always. Sometimes I grow the different colored mixes, but I really like this type of lettuce. It just grows great for me. And I just seed it kind of heavily and then I pull some baby lettuce out and then I let some of the heads get bigger and I usually just um, cut some off and then I come back and get more is usually how I harvest it. Um, but sometimes I like to leave some larger heads other places. Ooh, so I wanted to get some Ice Queen. This is um, Summer Crisp Ice Queen Rain de Glace. I was thinking I wonder if this is kind of like an iceberg sort of lettuce but not quite. I don't know, it just looked really yummy and I wanted to try it. So I got this. Oh, okay, so now we're gonna get into the squashes and the pumpkins. 
So I got some Cinderella pumpkins because my husband has been obsessed with them for some reason. And so I got some. I got some Jack B. Littles because I've been wanting to grow these for years and they're so adorable. I've never grown pumpkins before. We've grown squash, um, but I want to try growing pumpkins. I don't like eating either, um, but you know, I figure they're pumpkins and they're cute and I can decorate with them. And I got this Jardale pumpkin. I don't know, it's pretty. <laughs> Ooh, and I got this Lumina pumpkin. Oh, I love the white pumpkins too, they're so beautiful. And oh, the red warty thing pumpkin. All of these pumpkins I believe are just like dual purpose where you can eat them too, except for maybe the jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. I don't know, I wanted to grow some pumpkins for fun. And then I got some sugar pie pumpkins, so that way we have some pie pumpkins. My husband likes me to make pumpkin pie. I do not like it, but I will cook it for him as long as he cuts them open because the smell of squash, oh, especially pumpkin, just, it's horrible. But I got some blue Hubbard squash because it's beautiful. I just like pumpkins because of how they look. I just, I just don't want to eat them. Oh, and then I got some honey nut squash. Again, I don't like eating um, squash, but my husband really likes it. And so I thought these honey nuts, I've heard that they're better tasting than other butternut squashes. Plus they're smaller. And so they're more of a personal size. So that way they're just good for just him to eat instead of, you know, him having to cut open one to cook and eat it throughout the week. He can have one and eat it in a couple days maybe. Um, oh, and then I got this sweet meat winter squash. I thought he might like something a little bit different. And I think that most of these store pretty good too. Oh, okay. Now we're getting into more of my things again. So I got some Italian basil. This is the Genovese. Um, yeah, I mean, it's basil. <laughs> and some lemon basil. Thomas, my son, was so excited about that because it's something a little bit different. And I got some lettuce leaf basil. I thought the texture was super neat on it. And I love the different flavors of the different basils and the different textures of them because some of them are so much thicker and some of them are so much thinner. I do not like how purple basil tastes compared to other basils, but it works great in cut flower arrangements and so I wanted some because the flowers are beautiful. Plus I like to grow them in pots on my um, patio and they look beautiful because they just flower and the insects love them as well. I got some Cherville or however you say that. I say it like Cherville but and I got some garlic chives. Oh man I'm so excited to try these. And herbs in general are really easy to grow. I mean I find the most success with growing them when I have a cover over my seed trays. That's just I mean I could never really grow seeds until I just finally started using one of those and now it just easy peasy. Um, I, oops, <laughs> I got some cilantro. I believe I might still have some cilantro seeds, but I wanted to get some more just in case. And I love cilantro, so why not? I didn't grow it that well this year, but I think it wasn't really warm enough and then it got too warm and that's why I had a harder time. So this year, if we have a greenhouse, I think it'll do better. I got some dill and oh, I got some fennel for my husband and my son because they love licorice. And I like anise, and I, well, I like anise seeds, and I pretty much don't really like much of any other kind of licorice flavored thing, but I can handle some fennel, and so I thought it'd be good for chopped up and put in some, in like some roasted vegetables, so. And I got some lemon balm, because lemon balm is wonderful. We already have lemon balm, but I want more. And I got some marjoram, because it's delicious, and some savory. And, oh, I got some candy stevia. So, I just thought it'd be fun to have out in the yard. Kind of another one of those things that's just fun to have for kids. So that way, I don't know, I just like having things that kids, I can tell them that they can eat that and they can go there and get as much as they want and just keep trying it. It just makes things a lot more fun for kids, I feel like, and more approachable. Whereas, it's like kids get told no all the time. And having a garden space that they can just go and have fun in and find snacks, I think that's great. Like having cherry tomatoes and strawberries and raspberries everywhere. I don't know, the kids just love it. So, and I have some tarragon. Plus, I love it too because while I'm out gardening, I want a snack. <laughs> and that's why I like to plant carrots too. Like I plant them in lots of different garden beds because it's just fun to be able to grab some 
and munch on them while you're working. So I got some Ami Green Mist. This one I just thought was pretty. I have no experience with this whatsoever, but it was beautiful and I couldn't not get it. Ooh, oh, I love these asters. I love the asters that are kind of like daisies. I don't know. They're just beautiful and I love them and I wanted to grow them. Oh, I got more asters. These are the Tower Chamois. Um, they're beautiful. I just love the colors and I wanted to get them. I've never grown um, anything other than the very common ones, but I wanted to get some others to try. Oh, and I love these bachelor buttons. I just love the color combination. I tried to get a lot of seeds that had multiple colors in that packet so that way I didn't have to buy as many packets. Um, I got some Canterbury Bells because they're beautiful and I believe that they're pretty easy to grow. If I'm thinking that this is the right plant that I've seen in person, then they're amazing and incredible and bloom all season long. Oh, I got two packets of carnations because I love carnations and I always get that song stuck in my head that my grandpa likes to sing. Um, so anyways, if you know what I'm talking about, let me know. White sport coat and a pink carnation. <laughs> Probably not gonna have that stuck in my head the rest of the day, but carnations are wonderful. And my husband says that they're easy to grow. I've never grown them, but we'll see. Oh, I got this flamingo celosia. Look at that. Ah, oh, it's so pretty. I mean, this isn't actually a picture of it, but if it looks anything like that, I'm going to be happy. I got the bright lights blend cosmos. I planted these in our last garden and they did pretty good. And I also got, oh, the Double Click Blend Cosmos. I wanted to get something a little bit different than what I've ever planted before. And these Double Cosmos sure were the ticket. I mean, they're gorgeous and I am very excited about these. Oh, and then I got some Drumstick Flower Crespidia. So, anyways, those are cool. Um, oh, and I got some Foxglove Seeds because I would like to put these in the perennial garden to have bloom next year, <laughs> clearly. A lot of these flowers I got because I wanted to have them as dried flowers, but I got this grass, it says bunny tails. I mean, is that not just so adorable? I, I'm i sure it should be easy to grow because it's a grass, right? I mean, grass is easy to grow. I've never not been able to grow grass, except for when it didn't rain that whole week and all the grass died because it was 100 degrees in like September. It was ridiculous. But anyways, lawn set aside, grass is pretty easy. <laughs> this is Chatter's Double Blend Hollyhock. Let's see if that'll focus for you. Oh, so pretty. I love hollyhocks and I want to plant lots of hollyhocks because they're wonderful. And if I can finally get them to self-seed, that would be even better. Because they should self-seed here. I have lots of places around they will self-seed, but I haven't had them self-seed, so I'm just going to try some different varieties and see if they will for next year. I got this Apache Summer Hyssop. It has a separate little bag, because I'm sure these are obviously going to be teeny tiny seeds, and there's a lot of information here for them, so I'm going to have to go through all of that, but they're so pretty, and I wanted hyssop. I got this lavender hyssop and true hyssop. I want to get hyssop because of its medicinal sort of herbal properties, but also they're beautiful. So, oh, I got this money plant, honey. I have no idea why I got this. I just needed it, so I got it. I got some Indian peace pipe. We like to grow tobacco because it's great for a, like using for a pest repellent. Um, it smells really great and I don't know. It's just cool. It's also fun for those people that they come around and they use tobacco products and be like, hey, try a little bite of this It's because it's super spicy. And I mean, anyways, <laughs> it's not something you want to do all the time because anyways, it's still nicotine, but it works really great to repel pests on other plants. And um, this plant's also kind of sticky. So when you have it in different places, pests will get stuck to it and then they can't go and bother your other plants so we've had some good success with this in the past and i don't know it's just kind of cool so what we've done is we take the plant and we turn it into a tea and then spray that on our other plants and oh it just keeps other bugs away but also just growing it near them works really great too growing that in combination with marigolds is super wonderful i found in my experience 
I got some flocks because who doesn't love flocks? I mean, I've had some success growing flocks, but I thought I might do better growing it from seed. So I'd just try it, maybe. I got some Iceland poppies, so those are beautiful. Oh, I got some scabiosas. Oh, this is so pretty. Oh, and I got some stock. I got a few of these, like the scabiosas and the stock. I got them because apparently they should be pretty easy for first time seed starting flower growers. And I also wanted some straw flowers and things because I wanted them to be something I can dry really easily. So there's that. Oh, and I got some sweet peas. My son and husband wanted me get sweet peas because they just love how they smell. So I got some sweet peas. I already have a couple packets of sweet peas, but I wanted to get some more just in case. Um, I got some Verbascium mullen. So I love mullen. It's great. Um, I usually just like we find the edible mullen that you use out in the woods or whatever. <laughs> but I wanted to grow some mullen for the flowers. So usually we just see the big leaf mullen that you see everywhere. And you know, I think you can use it as toilet paper even. But anyways, um, this is Brazilian vervain. Yeah, this is Brazilian vervain verbena. Verbenas are just beautiful, and I love how they're kind of sparkly. I love verbena. Um, oh, I got some yarrow, because yarrow is supposed to grow super well here, and I haven't really had that great success myself, but I wanted to try seeding it and planting it in a few different areas, rather than just buying some and hoping it takes off in that one spot. I want to try it in multiple areas. And I got more zinnias. Um, these are cactus flower blend. I just love that spikiness of them. They're so cool. Some cut and come again zinnias. I mean, they're just pretty. They're, they almost look like a dahlia type of zinnia to an extent. To an extent. <laughs> and some NV zinnias because apparently everybody is obsessed with them. And so I thought I'd grow them because if anybody wants to have some cut flowers, they can have some, I guess, if I can grow them. And then I got some fireball blend zinnias. And then I got some giant purple zinnias. Oh, they're just so pretty. Clearly, I like pinks and purples, if you didn't guess. I had to force myself to buy oranges and things. <laughs> oh, I got doubles of these just because I thought they were so pretty and this was like my favorite color combination with the red and the pink and the purple. I loved it. So these are the Northern Lights blend. I got two of them. And then the last seeds that I got was this Persian carpet. Oh, that one's so pretty. I got this one mostly for my husband because he likes flowers that have different color variations in them. So he just thinks that they're really wonderful, so I got some of these for him. Plus, you know, there are different colors than what I normally pick. Alright, um, oh! Back over here, I got one more thing. This is the biggest seed packet that I got because I knew we would plant a lot of these. I wanted to try the Danvers. I've never tried Danvers before, but... I hear that they're really great carrots, so I thought I'd try them. So I got also a bag for free. I don't know why, but they have a free bag, and it's cute, and I love it, and so that was nice. So now I can put all my seeds in this bag, and they'll be a little bit more contained because usually I just throw them all in a basket, and then I have to search through the whole basket. So instead, I can throw them all in a bag and then search through the bag. So it's a win-win. <laughs> All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it kind of helpful or something. I don't know. I try to give some helpful information on these plants because I'm not going to pop them up just yet. It's almost Christmas and I still have a lot of things to do because I'm going to make lasagna and also my husband wants me to start packing up because he thinks we're going to move any day, which we're not. He just he just wants to. So. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm going to clean up my mess and my light is dying so I need to go work on my dollhouse some more. So I hope you have a really great day and if you have any questions please put them in the comment section below and I just like to talk to you anyways. So yeah, I hope you have a really very Merry Christmas and yeah, have a really great week. <laughs> Bye!